Dr. Andy Galpin, a professor of kinesiology at Cal State University Fullerton and one of the foremost world's experts on the science and applications of methods to increase strength, hypertrophy, and endurance. Today's episode is all about how to increase hypertrophy of muscles. There has to be some sort of signal from the external world. Um, this could actually, oftentimes it's things like stretching of the cell wall, which is what happens with exercise, right? So you're contracting, you're shortening, you get this big stretch of the cell wall. It can come from as simple things like an amino acid infusion. This is just eating protein. This is why protein ingestion alone is anabolic, right? It will help you grow muscle independent of even moving. So uh, just eating protein will grow your muscles. Yeah, certainly. Uh, and those, that, those data are, are very clear. Um, of, of course, like anything, there's a saturation point. Uh, in terms of total amount you need to get to and, and things like that. But yeah, if you were to walk into a laboratory fasted overnight and I gave you 30 grams of protein, we would see a very measurable increase in protein synthesis um, quite clearly for several hours, probably four to five plus hours. Um, we could maybe bring in some people that would know those data better, but many hours later. With no weight training. Correct. I am betting that most people are not aware of that fact. You know what's actually interesting about it is um, if you do the exact same study again, and you just did strength training, you would also see an improvement in protein synthesis, right? But those factors are independent and the mechanisms are independent such that if you do them both together, they stack on top of each other. So from a practical standpoint, putting together protocols um, for any outcome that you want or don't want for any modality, you don't have a gym, you have uh, weights, you have dumbbells only, you only have kettlebells, you don't want to, you only use body weight. We can, you only have three days a week, you have seven days a week. You wanna maximize muscle growth. You wanna get a little bit stronger. Any of these variables you wanna throw at me, uh, we have a large evidence base for exactly how to get those adaptations and not others. So um, while we have a lot to learn about the mechanisms and the physiology, uh, we have pretty good legs to stand on in terms of what to do to get whatever adaptations you want. So what are the essential components of an effective strength and hypertrophy protocol? Okay, so what I would like to actually do is, is walk you through both of those, because as we mentioned before, they overlap, uh, but the training needs to be differentiated so that you can optimize either strength, hypertrophy, or if you actually want, you can get a combination of both. This allows you to then get the adaptation you want, avoid ones you don't want, uh, and then get it even a combination if that's the preference. So a lot of people will talk about, I want to get a little stronger, I want to add some muscle. That's a different answer than someone who wants to truly maximize muscle which is a different answer from somebody who maximizes, wants to maximize strength, which is a different answer from somebody who wants to maximize strength, but not actually gain muscle. So we have all these combinations. What's important to understand before we get into the details is a couple of things. Number one, we, we've been teasing this concept so far of the concepts are few, but the methods are many. And so I wanna hit those concepts right now. These are, um, as, you, as you say, these are the non-negotiables that have to happen in any training program. And, and I'm referring to these in the strength and hypertrophy conversation, but these are true of power development, speed development, muscular endurance, uh, endurance, any other thing. These are things that just have to happen for any training program to work. I mentioned one uh, a, a little bit earlier, which was adherence. And so the, my um, frequent collaborator, Dan Garner, will constantly say, consistency beats intensity. Um, again, in fact, the literature will show you very clearly adherence um, is the number one predictor of physical fitness outcomes. So, we want to do something that you will engage in, will uh, you'll put effort into, and you'll be able to repeat consistently over time. So that's number one. The second one is, and this is a major reason that people don't hit their fitness goals. In fact, I would argue outside of not doing it, the number one mistake they make is progressive overload. So I'm going to walk you through exactly how much you should be increasing um, your sets and reps and weight, etc., uh, per week, per month. Uh, later but that's the biggest thing you have got to have some sort of overload uh, the body works as an adaptation mechanism right so in fact um, we, we talked previously about the harvard fatigue lab and one of the things actually people don't realize is the concept of homeostasis is actually comes from research at the harvard fatigue lab it was um, work that they did on an endurance runner i forget his name uh, and they sort of realized that after a long period of time working out uh, this is an acute exercise bout the body actually comes back to some stable place, despite the fact he was continuing to work. And that's exactly what bore the phrase steady state. Uh, and that actually then they launched off and they said, wow, there's this state that the body wants to be in and we'll call this homeostasis. So that, those all concepts came out of exercise physiology, which is really, really cool, right? Um, we don't get a lot of love a lot of times scientifically, but that's a good one that we took. So why that all matters 
is we have got to achieve some sort of overload without uh, going excess. So we'll cover that later uh, exactly what to do and we'll get pot potentially get into overtraining and monitoring and monitoring, things like that. But you have to have some sort of consistent, predictable overload. That's what's going to cause adaptation to continue to cause stress. If you don't do that, you can still do things like burn calories. You can still get some of the other benefits of exercise like improved mood, cognitive function, et cetera, et cetera, flexibility increases. All those can happen without a progressive overload. But if you want to see these gains in strength and hypertrophy, you really need to um, progressively overload. So that's concept number two. Uh, the third one here um, is, is going to be individualization. And this is where we can get into things like personal preference, you know, equipment availability. You have kettlebells or dumbbells, or you only have bands, or you have none of that. Um, these are all smaller details, but that's an important component uh, to it. The last one I really want to get into is picking the appropriate target. And we went through this when we talked about the fitness protocol. And, and if you run through something like that and you run some testing and figure out where your biggest limitations are, that's going to help you identify where you need to go. Um, so if you can do all those things, you're going to be in a good spot to balance specificity and variation. All right. So if you want to make sure you grow your biceps, you better make sure your biceps are working. Having said that, if you over rely on specificity, you're going to increase the likelihood of overuse injuries, which is going to come back and actually hamper consistency over time. All right. So this is when hedging towards specificity is important, but too much can cause a problem. If you go the other direction and you go too much variation, so imagine you're just sort of doing all kinds of different exercises every time you, you work out. That's actually not enough stimuli directly on the muscle or muscle groups or movement pattern if you're wanting to learn a new movement uh, to get you very far. And so this is a classic problem of I'm doing a lot of work, but I don't have a very clear direction. I lack specificity. So I'm working, but I'm not seeing a lot of improvements. And this is like in the business world, et cetera. This is like doing a whole bunch of different things means you get nothing really done. So that's the game we're going to play here right? How do we overload this stuff? How do we make sure we're balancing specificity and variation? How do we make sure I want to do this? And then how do I individualize it for my needs and circumstances and, and movement restrictions and of time availability and my calendar and desires and all these things. So those are the concepts we absolutely have to hit. The methods that we choose run across a handful of variables and we call these things modifiable variables because as you modify them or you make different choices within these variables, you get different outcomes or adaptations. This is exactly what determines the nine adaptations we, that we've been talking about. So the way that I like to say this is exercises do not determine adaptation. So you can't simply go, I want to get stronger. Therefore, I'm going to choose these exercises. That's not how it works. What determines adaptation is the execution of the exercises. So a uh, deadlift is my favorite example. A deadlift is a common um, example that people think of when they want to choose a lower body strength exercise. But a deadlift will not increase your strength unless you're executing it in the proper fashion. I'm not only talking about technique here. I'm talking about these modifiable variables. The same thing for power exercises. We'll commonly see mistakes of doing uh, activities like a box jump which is great. People think, oh, I'm going to get improve my power, which we know is extremely highly correlated to um, activities of daily living and particularly living unassisted as you age, right, is reduction of power. So they'll do an activity like a box jump. What they're failing to realize is unless you do it powerfully, you won't actually increase power. Um, if you don't move fast, you won't get faster. So the, the, the way that we manipulate these variables is everything to determining the adaptation you get or again, don't get.